come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. What is the Saturday Night Freak Show, you ask? Well, every Saturday night we sit around and we watch movies <laughs> and then we talk about them for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. And these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And welcome, Michaela. Michaela is joining us as a permanent resident. Yay. Yay. Superstar. <laughs> when you started this, I thought you were going to be like, what is the Saturday Night Freak Show? Sometimes we don't even know. <laughs> that was your mood today. It's just like, sometimes we don't know why we do this. Tonight is one of those nights. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so this, oh, well, uh, Michaela is uh, is coming in. Uh, Travis has retired from the Saturday Night Free Show. Long time listeners will know. But he hasn't moved to Alaska. He'll probably be back in some form of guest appearances later on, I'm sure. Are we going to like retire a jersey in his name, like in the basement here uh, or something? Oh, gee. You know, like, what can we yeah. retire? <laughs> well, we retired a character in his name, so I think that's good enough. <laughs> uh, that's true, yeah. Lurk the butler has yes. gone his uh, merry way also. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so this uh, month we're doing listeners' choice picks. These are, uh, we solicited from you back in November to let us know, uh, you know what you'd like us to review. Thanks a lot. We compiled it. Yeah, we are, well, we do appreciate that you sent us a, well, a list of stuff. And... We got some gems out of okay, it. Okay, we did, yes. Check out the Dead Heat episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've got a couple more to go. And then, uh, you know, like I said uh, on the other episodes, like, don't be upset if we don't pick your movie because uh, we sat down, we watched all these trailers, we did some internal voting and this and that. And uh, some of them, I'm sure, will be showing up later in the year. Where we have now a treasure trove of movies yes. to uh, Safe bet. It will to show draw from. Point. Whoever suggested the baby, uh, you just wait. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> Whoever so suggested go. the baby has ruined us. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. So uh, Holly picked uh, tonight. Well, actually, you or choose you chose tonight's yes. movie. Tonight I chose Rawhead Rex, who was submitted by Mr. Ryan Burrett. There you go. So thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you. Well, I don't know Ryan. how we thank you. Now. <laughs> so what year was this movie made? 1986. And who directed this movie? Uh, George Pavlov. 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 Yeah. George Pavlov. Pavlov. Who I think sure. is known for one other movie. He, I think he's done four movies total in his career. I think. Oh, four. Okay. I don't. I hadn't heard of any of them. So. Well, he did a movie called Underworld, also known yes. as Transmutations. It was based uh, on a screenplay by Clive Barker. So this is uh, this is 1986. I'm unsure of the published date of Clive Barker's Books of Blood, but the, these are the. St- it's a collection of short stories that Clive Barker became famous for. I want to say it was in like the eighties. Well, they were released. I suppose this is the other thing in in the UK. They were called the Books of Blood. Here, they came out as different. You know, there's the um, Inhuman Condition. I think was one of them. Cabal was another one. Uh, in the Flesh was another one. So they were retitled. But basically, each one of them has a collection of stories in it. And uh, as he was blowing up this um, film company said, hey, you write scary shit. We want to make scary shit. We, should make <laughs> we don't want that. Original movie. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> well, he made this movie. He wrote this movie called Underworld, uh, which is like, uh, I've never seen it. Anybody seen it? No. Oh. no. It's mobsters versus monsters, I think is basically the byline on it. Why wasn't that the title? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, well, that should mobsters. Well, transmutations, is that a good title? That's what the United uh, States That didn't uh, hook title. me. Mobsters versus monsters hooked me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But apparently it was so bad oh. that they uh, they said they had another one. You know, basically they had the rights to some of his stories, and they said they wanted to do Rawhead Rex next, and would he write it? And he said he did. So he wrote the script for this movie, and uh, based on this, he said, next time I'm doing it myself, damn it. And he did Hellraiser. Mm. So the, the these two movies are the reason we got Hellraiser, because he was uh, convinced that nobody could do his stuff better than he could. I'll give him that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If we had to get this movie in order to get Hellraiser, I'm fine with that. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a decent trade, but, I think. Well, this movie has a decent sized cult following. Mm-hmm. If you look up Rawhead Rex, if you Google it, you're going to find tons and tons of fan images, mm-hmm. sculpts, uh, maquettes, t 
T-shirts featuring this monster. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was also uh, featured in the comic series Nightbreed, which was based on uh, Clive Barker's Nightbreed, obviously. He was in, I think, five issues. So it was like a 20-issue series, something like that. And then also became a graphic novel. Yeah, where they so, went back and tried to actually do the design from the I happen story to have itself. the design when we get to... Oh, the so that's what I was going to mention. Yeah. <laughs> we all know what it was that's, supposed to look right. like. It's, it's one thing we all know about when this we get movie. To yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess we get into this movie. It takes place in Ireland. I guess. Uh, I guess uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> in the So it's Ireland in the 80s and a photographer. No, he's a writer named Howard Hollenbeck. Historian, yes. Has yeah. come to Ireland to document a series of sacred sites, mm. which he defines as uh, pre-Christian or pagan sites that a lot of uh, Christian churches have been built upon. Mm-hmm. Why is this significant? Well, actually, no, it starts before this. In classic English folklore kind of way of a farmer in his field, mm. where he's got this gigantic uh, phallic statue mm. From pre-pagan times, like standing in the middle of the field, and he and his buddies are trying to tear this thing out. I've seen this in other movies, like Blood on Satan's Claw. There's a rock that they, you know, find a skull underneath it, the lair of the white worm. They're always doing this in England. They find some evil... There's a lot of old shit in England. Yeah, buried under the peat. That's where the old shit comes from. Yeah, it's It's where the history is. England, yeah. But man, when this pillar gets hit by lightning, you would have thought it was a metal rod the way it like reacted. Yeah. Like it was just a big stone pillar, but man, when it got hit by lightning, shit went down. Yeah. Spiritual. It's evil. Gases <laughs> escape from the earth, which you think would be like a sign of hey, there's something bad going on here. <laughs> Run <but>. away. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm I don't know much about the soil in Ireland. It's maybe, peat. maybe that's no, maybe it's very, normal. They have like six the, inches of topsoil, so they have lots of really long green grass. So you can burn their yeah. mud. Michaela yeah. knows a lot about. <laughs> yeah, I actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they dry it out. It's called yeah. peat or something. Mm-hmm. They throw it in the fireplace yeah. and keeps more. You guys know way more about the soil yeah. in Ireland than I thought you would. Yeah. Yeah. Colin, you've been to Ireland. Did you see tall phallic stones and everything? Uh, not no. in the More country. Lucky. Well, Ireland's a land of a lot of super. You know, I mean, like leprechauns and banshees. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, so. I suppose it's interesting to set the film there because you've got this kind of, you know, pre-Christian heritage, right? So you can, if you're going to make a monster movie, you can at least, you know, have some kind of origin story for it. Mm-hmm. Was there an origin story? Yeah, no, I, I was going to ask. Did no, I miss something? I think, um, I think they shared it with the characters and kept it from us. That's kind of how it seemed. Maybe. I kept waiting for like yeah. someone to be like, there's a reason this monster's here. And that, that's, that's, that was it. <laughs> other than the farmer dug him up in his field? Uh, yeah, other than that. Other than, I mean, the, other than we can get that apparently this monster was buried under the ground and they stuck the big rock on top of him to keep him there. It's like he shall forever be entombed here as long as this yeah. rock rests on his place. They basically, but, they basically just said he's always been here. But they also, some of this is recorded in the stained glass windows of the church itself, which I thought was a nice touch, actually, Mm -hmm. at least from a story standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's like in these crazy, you know, murals, a mural when it's a stained glass window, whatever, fresco, no? Mosaic. There you Mm -hmm. go. Thank you very much. You know, there's a picture of, of course, you know, Rawhead Mm -hmm. Rex buried under the ground. And I think the Latin code word or phrasing on how to actually beat him. Yeah. Which means absolutely nothing. Something like, he is afraid of what he cannot be. It's a really backwards like that. fucking yeah. phrase that means nothing. <laughs> like, yeah. It, yeah. I guess we should talk about Rawhead Rex then, since he's going to come, you know, all basically he does throughout the rest of the movie is... Uh, Rampage? <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he's Rampaging Rex. It is. This is like Rampage. Clear yeah. tables. Yeah. <laughs> clear yeah. tables really everywhere. Really it is. A lot. A Punch through walls that. and clear tables. Not a fan of neatness. Yeah. He's a very messy monster. It is very weird. Every single place he goes into, he has the first thing he does is clear the table with a big sweep of his gigantic paw. He's not, yeah, he's not a fan. All right, how would you describe Rawhead Rex? Uh, Reject Guar character? I mean, feels like. He <laughs> yeah. feels, is he wearing uh, football pads? Like, it feels like he's got shoulder pads going well, on. Yeah, there, but right? they he's had spikes hold. on him. I mean, oh, it's totally like a it's, metal, you know. It feels like it. Well, it's this is the 80s, right? So I suppose yeah. an 80s designer is like, we're just going to make him like, oh. He could be on stage with Guar. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's kind of like an 80s adaptation of like an orc. But yeah. with, but with the eyes of Christopher Lloyd from Roger Rabbit. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If Ralph Bakshi drew orcs, yeah, yes, yeah. 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 basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they didn't articulate too much unless no. you shot him in close up. And they had no budget. <laughs> they did sculpt a big. Well, I guess we're saying it's a quasi animatronic head. Only yeah, again, only oh, in the, it's just for close ups because it, it had to be because most of the time it's uh, it's some dude. Uh, running around who obviously just has like a rubber head just stuck onto him because it looks like a regular person, a big guy, but then he's got an extra foot of head sticking. It's really weird looking Mm -hmm. and it it moves a little in wide shots. The mouth moves a little bit, but for anything toothy, very toothy, Mm -hmm. but to get anything more complicated than that, the way they shoot him throughout the movie, it's very weird. It's always stationary so he can, you know, look around and do bigger jaw movements. Because mm. it's, that, a, it's an awkward rubber suit. It's I mean, an you, awkward can't, rubber suit. you can't move fluidly in it, so it's no. got to be just the headshot, you know? Yeah, all the shots are either like really distant silhouettes or really yeah. close ups of the teeth and the jaws, and that's yep. it. I got to tell you, I'm very surprised that there's such a following for this monster, uh, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, I mean, okay. I remember, you know, I was an avid Fangoria reader at the time this came out. That's right. Printed magazines way back in the day. Holy shit. Because all us little wow. kids had. We didn't have these fancy internets. So we got our gore, you know, fixes from Fangoria. And they had, I remember the issue, which was talking about Rawhead Rex, and it had some photos of it. I'm like, that looks cool, right? At mm-hmm. being whatever, 12 yeah. years old or whatever the hell. And But once you see it moving in the movie, it totally destroys all of that yeah. illusion. Like, I can Loses show you a couple, it. like, even the poster, I think, is the shot of him, uh, Coming out of the ground at the beginning, that yeah. side shot, which like that looks kind of interesting. Right? That was my interest in this movie because we've been talking about Rawhead Rex for years on this podcast, or you know, at least within this group. And I was like, that monster looks cool. I want to mm-hmm. see what this movie is about. Yeah, when we <laughs> no, when we were going over the the list of submissions, the listener submissions. I remember Sean and I pulled up the picture and we're like, this is so fantastic! Like, we have to watch this movie. I've always wanted to. And then we did. But is it when you see it actually in motion that somehow it changes your yeah, expectation it, it, of what the monster is? I I, th- I think it's a combination of when we actually... Because first off, they show the monster like full throttle, like five minutes in. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's there. It's It starts, you know. In basically and, broad daylight. Yeah, also, exactly. Yeah. And we've had this discussion no on the mystery. show before. Like, is it better... To show a monster up front throughout the whole movie, or is it better to leave element of surprise? We've talked about this before. I'm in the camp that I like a little bit of element of surprise. I like in the shadows. I like the darkness. I like to hide the flaws and give just a little more suspense to it. So for me, that that's kind of an element that I, I think influenced my opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you guys thought. You have the opposite opinion of these filmmakers. Yes. We'll tell you that. Yeah, well, they yes. figure they've got a monster and they've got to show the thing, you know, to get the money's worth out of the, however yeah. much they spent on the suit. That's what's going to bring people is a monster. You got to put that thing on screen as often as you can. Yeah. And in, in concordance with that, you also have to have an entertaining script. Oh, oh uh, what? You should. Clive. Enter Clive. <laughs> what oh, the Clive. fuck, Clive. Well, I'm convinced after watching this movie that Clive Barker has never actually met or had an interaction with a real woman. No. Well, that's safe to say. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely not. I mean. Safe to say. Because the women in this movie behave in, well, basically you've got the, uh, yeah, (laughs) Howard's wife, (laughs) Howard, the intrepid traveling, uh, you know, photographer or whatever, his wife, they have these very, uh, how would you describe it? Awkward exchanges. Awkward for us. Yeah. And anyone yeah. them. <laughs> An example one might be that he's like, uh, what do he say? He's like, well, you know, I'm a guy who likes dead things. And she's like, I'll, I'll keep that. that. I'll remember ah. that. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Clive Barker writes 
every woman in this movie to like every response is sexual innuendo, whether it should be or not. Yeah. She delivers yeah. it like it is. Like yeah. every delivery is like blah, 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 blah. like those yeah. same beats of sexual innuendo, whether it's appropriate or not for the situation. And that just like makes my skin crawl just listening to it. Oh and, God! And, and it's like you Tommy have, Wiseau level uh, 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 unaware yeah. of yeah. how people behave. You know, Colin, you have dirty eyes. Did you know that? All right, keep it keep it warm for me. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's what, yeah. What, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, then his other—I mean, uh, other female characters. There's the uh, there's uh, well, there's the girlfriend. Yeah. Okay, so the, the movie, babysitter, I think. She's yeah, the it takes a detour. I mean, like our our central characters are Howard, his wife, and his two kids, a boy and a girl, who are you know coming along with him on this trip, and they're waiting to go to Dublin, right? Mm. And we can't spend all that much time with them because really they don't have anything to fucking do in this movie except no. for one pivotal pot, plot point: Howard's. Uh, son ends up a victim of Rawhead Rex. Indeed. Yeah. Which then puts Howard on the, you know, I got a, you know, vengeance for my son and stop this rampaging beastie. But the monster, once it actually gets up and going, goes after a trailer park at one point. Hey, they got trailer parks in Ireland. Too. Right. That was a nice little slice of life insight there. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> Yep, where you know the kids are trying to make out, but the uh, in front of the kid, worst That's babysitter weird. ever. Yeah, so this was the other female character, who I'm like, uh, who in the how did he re- write her? Because she's like the opposite of the wife. Mm-hmm. The wife's she's like biased. turning everything into a sexual innuendo, but this woman is like, you know, the boyfriend's making out with her in the. Uh, in the RV, in, in the RV, and once they go outside, because that's what you do, you don't kick the kid out or anything, or tell the kid, little bratty kid to shut. You the get fuck lost, up. yeah, or they have a bedroom in the back or whatever. No, we're gonna go out into the chilly, frozen, foggy woods <laughs> and try and make like out you. there. And once they get out there, she's like, "No, Billy, I thought you just wanted to talk." It's Andy. Andy, thank it you. It could have been no, Billy. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I don't know. I just thought that was corny as hell. Yeah. It's like yeah. clearly they were, you know, about the business and then, you know, got out into the woods and then. Well, you even it. hear him like zip his pants back up. Right. So like, yeah. so he, he had yeah. his pants unzipped and she thought they were just going to talk. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Dog. What? Yeah. And like, where did that come from? Because they were just making out hot and heavy in front of the kid a minute ago. Mm-hmm. But whatever. Raw head Rex stumbles into this and makes mincemeat of everybody in the. I like to think about the Foley artist that got to do that that zipping pants scene. Like it was someone's job to make sure that sounded right at that well, moment. There was, a, there was a footstep artist or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there was a oh, Foley was there? artist and a footstep artist. So nice. somebody was gainfully employed in this movie. He was proud of that one. He was like, guys, come here. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Zip. Ah, there it is. Yeah. But the other woman that we didn't mention is the pregnant toward, towards the beginning. The pregnant ah. woman, mm-hmm. the, the farmer's wife. Oh, this is a key key clue to understanding the psychology of it, Rawhead Rex. Exactly. Was it, in his was rampage. What? Oh, no, no. Oh, I okay. think this was... Well, this is, I, <laughs> I felt think, like a okay, joke. So there, psychology of his rampage. Because as we're watching <laughs> really? this movie, Sean, I think, you know, even though I didn't remember it going, I think I have read this story. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Because there are... I'm like, oh, that's what that's supposed to mean. Or like, this means that, right? Okay, so what happens in this scene, Holly? And I'll and you tell me what it means to you, and I'll tell you what Clive Barker intended. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, all let's right. play this game. Um, so in this scene, Rawhead Rex is on his rampage, killing and whatnot. He kills the farmer, and then the wife screams. He goes inside. He follows her, finds her upstairs, cowering in the corner. You you think he's about to kill her, but instead. He stops when he sees that she's pregnant. He, he almost he almost hovers over her stomach with his hand. Like there's something about the fact that this woman is pregnant that pushes him off. To me, I I thought there's some sort of I I, had, I immediately thought there was a link like with a like some sort of fertility situation like a he's because he's supposed to be a, a demon of some sort. So I thought like a fertility goddess god. Some that's where my connection went. I don't really know what he was getting at because she was the only one, but right. that's what I assumed. It didn't play out, but yeah. Do you think it was some sort of like Irish Catholic birth uh-huh. control oh, analogy? Go. Could be the Irish Catholicism's real heavy in this movie, so oh, yeah, 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 it really. So true. All right, so <laughs> Rawhead Rex. 
first of all, you have his name, Rawhead, Ugh. right? Yeah. He's yeah. buried under what I, we assume would be a fertility symbol. It's a giant pole sticking <laughs> out of the ground, right? Oh. And his name is Rawhead. And I think in Clive Barker's mind that he's trying to do a riff on like old time, uh, like monster movies where you always have a creature going after women in the rampaging creature going after women. So he sees that as Rawhead himself is a, well, in the story, he's a literal dick. Mm -hmm. Just a penis. Yeah. 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 It is a rampaging penis. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the comic, it's actually drawn as. I have the picture. Oh, Oh, let's see this. This is the uh, graphic novel. (laughs) The graphic novel version of Rawhead Rex I have here in my hand. This is supposedly more accurate to what he wanted. Yeah. So basically, describe that for us, Sean. What are you looking at? Oh, that's like pumpkin head. It kind, of, yeah, slimier. A little slimier, and it's got a little more hair. It has the head of a penis, except it has eyes and teeth. And a lot of it teeth. Kind of, it's like pumpkin head mixed with the uh, Zuni fetish doll. That's kind yeah. of what it looks like to me. Okay. So if so, I think the makers of the film this interpreted this as if the character is a rampaging hard on, then. It has. We can't do that on screen, so we're going to make it a hyper masculine, hyper masculinized uh, creature. Mm-hmm. So it's going to have the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. basically, and mm-hmm. be running around. Mm-hmm. The thing is that they've toned down what this character is doing. He's supposed to be like the eater of children and the raper of women, or whatever, right? But they and he doesn't either. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess he does kill the kid, but he, he doesn't eats eat the him. Child, yeah. Does he eat him? He's not a child. Not a, oh, the the his kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah his he's, kid. But he just takes him away, right? I'm, yeah, I'm assuming. But he anyway, eats everyone him, but... else he takes away, he eats them. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it's just it's very there. The it, it, it was like, very like, obvious that he was going with like the Madonna and the whore complex in this movie. It's like they didn't want to dedicate to it though. Yeah, they just kind of half-assed it. It's like, yeah, we got a monster. And so it's going to be like a slasher-ish yeah, kind of. I mean, it's like, just like we're going to go this way. And sorry, uh, Clive, but we're not we're not going penis on this one. Right. But if he was a giant rampaging penis, then what does the uh, you know pregnant woman represent? Is like the diametric opposition of that. That's femininity, right? Yeah. right. And the fact that it says in the uh, the uh, um, the stained glass window. <clears throat> It's like he's afraid of the thing that he cannot. What is it? What the fuck? That is he cannot it? be? Yeah. S- some weird circular phrase like that doesn't yeah. mean anything. He's afraid of the vagina. Oh. The power of the vagina. That's what he's powerful. Of. Yeah. Yeah. The, In li- the, end the life of the- giver. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. It's like where he is just all death and destruction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This would have been much more interesting if it was an actual nine foot penis. Like I would look at the scale one, kind of going around to like, get people. Like, the scale in this picture is insane. He, he that would have been <laughs> cool. He was supposed like, to be massive. Right. Like if he had to look a little more uh, uh, more like a phallus to to pull this off in that size, I, I would have been for that because that's more interesting. Well, it just makes me wonder, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, this is obviously this Clive Barker's interpretation. I read that at one point that, you know, that's the way he saw, all, you know, monster movies. You know, Dicks. being, yeah, well, He's being gay, right, just not, right, yeah, yeah, but I not think for anything because I think that colors goes. his, you know, perspective on it because it's like, you know, he's like, well, clearly in all these movies, it's like it's a, it's a male monster going off after women like yes. all the time, where it's like, well, you could interpret it as the monster is the thing that disrupts, you know, enters into a society and disrupts like a social norm. It has to be stomped back down in order to, you know, restore the social norm by the end of it. It's like, it doesn't necessarily have to have a maleness to it. I grant you in a lot of the stories it does, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, cause you have Frankenstein mm-hmm. or the wolf man or mm-hmm. whatever the hell you have, you know, but that's, but we even get that in like slasher horror movies of that time. Anyway, it's always like, it's always sort of the, the male preying on women, as it were, and older slash. I mean, most slasher movies, even up until recently. And that's kind of what, like, the big thing about Nightmare on Elm Street too is, is that it's it's a male predator, but a male victim as well. And that right. that's what makes that movie so different. Yeah. Whether it's to its benefit or not is 
a judgment call, really. Sure. But you <laughs> know, I think at the time, yeah. that movie yeah. was rejected by the audience, who I don't even think could articulate why. <laughs> right. Because I remember seeing that when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw the first one and liked it. Saw the second one and it was just something, like something where I was did it make like, it feel oh. funny? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it just weird? like your. It just didn't feel like it Give was me a fuzzies. Something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is. This better not awaken Pretty something. Clear, clear. Is, yeah. No, it was more just that you felt like something was not. Right. You know, something no, yeah. that is integral to the formula was, yes. mm-hmm. was missing not there, misplaced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's cool they explored that, though. Like, at least they gave it a shot, you know, and tried something different, whether it sure. succeeded or not. So. But in this case, I, st- I still don't understand how, how Clive actually views women. Like this is so confusing. Like he, it seems like he's coming at every different angle when it comes to these female characters. Yeah, it's so, it's so contradicting. And yet all of them are wrong. Like he has yeah. so many different views, and yet all of them seem wildly <laughs> wrong. Like, but how is? But I mean, do we? You know, it's it's hard to say if we can blame that on Clive Barker or the right. producers. It's like at some point, do they take the script away from him and do rewrites based on? You know what yeah. they can actually set up or what, but yeah, that's where my confusion comes in. Because I'm like, okay, Clive Barker wrote the short story, but then he wrote this screenplay. Like, how did it come so far? You know, how did it change so much? It had to have been the producers. I would imagine so. Maybe they went and decided to take it more of a rampaging monster than any uh, subtext. For this mm-hmm. movie, because it doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's a, a whole lot going on in here. They just, they kind of just took it and went rampaging monster route. Yeah. Well, and writing a screenplay doesn't necessarily mean you get final say in it either. It means Very, you wrote right. one right. version. It mm-hmm. Means you wrote one version. Who knows how many times it was rewritten? Yeah. After yeah. that, at a certain so. point, he probably handed it off, mm-hmm. and then who knows how long from that point to I mean, what this mm-hmm. movie came out to be. I'm sure mm-hmm. it went through many changes. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't, I, we can't fully judge Clive Barker on this movie, on the end product of this movie. Right, yeah, because he's uh, disowned it. I mean, and basically, all, I mean, that's why he was tr- saying that he had to do the course correction of, uh, you know, Hellraiser. Then yeah. He wants to remake this movie. Career. I think, yeah, I heard that, but the rights are still tied up by whoever still owns this thing, which you can't find. We had to find it on YouTube. We looked all over, you know. To see if we could find it on Hulu, you know, yeah. Voodoo, or you know, anywhere. You want to pay a hundred bucks for a DVD? Yeah, because this is the last time apparently <laughs> that it was it. in print anywhere. Oof. Was uh, you know, I mean, it was the VHS days, and then uh, then this, or, sorry, the DVD, and then mm-hmm. obscurity. But some there's a cult keeping the character design at least alive. <clears throat> so there's also a priest in this movie. So this is the relationship that uh, that Rawhead Rex has with um, religion, right? Yeah. Because aside from being like a fertility demon, he's also a representation of, you know, that. Yeah. He's also a uh, pagan entity, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, at odds with the church. But there's this really weird, what is he? They call him the, the vicar? Verger. The verger. The verger. Which we're not entirely I don't know what sure. what a verger is. I'm going to look it up. Look it up, I'd like to know. In the Catholic Church, who's a wildly overacting fellow. <laughs> Virgil oh meets crazy God. priest. Uh, <laughs> named Declan. Because, oh, I mean, if you're going to have an Irish priest. Most wonderful character in this movie. Like, when, uh, uh, when Harold, is that his name? Howard? Howard. Howard. Yeah. Howard. Howard. When Howard, Howard walks in, <laughs> and he's just, like, throwing shit in the air. He's like, yeah, yeah, And just throwing stuff. Like, that's, yeah. that was great. This is my favorite part of the movie. Well, this guy never has <laughs> a chance to weird. be, nor- like, a normal character. Right, right from the time we met, meet him, he's like a sinister priest leading like yeah, hell's even choir or whatever. Anything, he's just like a dick. What was the meaning of that yet. scene where that woman in the in the audience she made some type of noise? I wasn't entirely sure what was going on there. Did she interrupt she the like, service? She and, fucked it all up. Yeah, and yeah, they had to did. start over. It's like we'll sit here and get this right, and we'll just make up the time was after. It, students, like, was it choir practice? <laughs> I was, yeah, maybe. I was so confused. Maybe. They do she end was... up saying their hallelujahs a few times too many. But, yeah, but he ends up becoming like a devotee, a, a, a yeah. servant of Rawhead Rex. Now, how does this happen? That's what I wanted to know. Well, first of all, a verger, as I have looked up, is an official in a church who acts as a caretaker and attendant, which makes sense. Uh, the second definition, an officer who carries a rod before a bishop 
or Dean as a symbol of office. Okay, then. So there That's, it is. That, so he's the, uh, the caretaker and attendant of the church. Okay. Okay. So he's not the priest, because the priest nope. is the guy next door. Yep. In the uh, rectory. The rectory, yes. Yes. All right, I'm all up on this. <laughs> there you go. You got it. You got the terminology. <laughs> Okay, so how does this guy become, because I thought maybe originally he was becoming possessed by some kind of, you know, whatever, whenever they open the, um, I was going to say grave, but whatever, they move the um, the, the pillar yeah. in the, the field, there's a woman in the church, gets her hands burned, and the priest wanders over to the altar. Yes, she mm-hmm. was putting a vase down on the altar, right? <laughs> yes, uh, she, she was. <laughs> if you say so, that's I, what I was feel like That's what she was doing. She yeah. was putting a uh, vase down on happened? the altar. I really thought it was okay because the stained glass window they show in this film that has Rawhead in the stained glass pattern and the light that shines and the through light his shines eyes. Through, I which thought, is the coolest part. I thought the light shining through his eyes like burned her like Superman style. That's, that's, what, I that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. 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 there's lightning in the sky and all this other shit. Yeah. So like, why not? Yeah, I mean. When that light coming through, like the raw head Rex, like stained glass, looks like a fucking laser pointer. It does. Like the way yeah. it's coming through, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. I thought she like got I Superman laser burned or something. But no, yeah. it turns out it's the altar itself. The altar. Whenever the priest touches it, yeah, he burns his hand, and that, of course, I mean, like immediately, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, he gets, immediately, his yeah. hands burn, and he gets these visions, which I can only assume were. The history of Rawhead because we don't really know. We just Something. saw he connects with Rawhead. We at saw that point. Just footage through like a jungle, <laughs> right? Felt like really a Predator movie anything. at that point. It did. Well, it felt like know Predator. The jungles in Ireland, so that <laughs> must be oh, yes. the prehistoric the hot, tropical Ireland. jungles yeah. of Ireland, like yeah. prehistoric Ireland. When I Rawhead yeah. Rex was a king, apparently, this is how yeah. we understand this character, right? Yeah. I according say character to, According loosely. to Declan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's our main source. Did he give a spiel at some point that I may have fallen asleep through where he explained who the hell Rawhead Rex is? He, all he says he's always been here. He's been king of this land. It's basically all he says. We also we never hear anyone refer to him as Rawhead Rex no, either, no do Rex. we? No, no Rex. Rex. There's Rawhead, Rawhead but there's yeah. no Rex. Rawhead. 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 The title for this movie sounds like like an eighties like oh, yeah. metal band. Yeah. So like it's mm-hmm. so tonally different from the actual movie. Yes. It doesn't the, make any sense. <laughs> the short story was called Rawhead Rex, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah. yeah. That's, okay. that's, that's what the, the comic's called, and that's what yeah, yeah. I don't know. The Rex doesn't. Well, I looked it up. There mm-hmm. is like some kind of correlation to like a character called Rawhead that's actually does like exist in English folklore, or maybe I can't remember if it was just that region, but there is like a raw head character as a boogeyman. Basically it's not, there's, I don't know if there's a description of him. I think that he's usually sitting on top of a, you know, pile of bones or something. There's a whole history of all the many things he's done. And then it says at the bottom description, nine foot dick. Right. That's that's probably all it says at the bottom. Oh, it fits. Yeah. And that might be Clive Barker just taking his like, spin on it. But right, he's like, oh, I'm, uh, I like that. I'm going to put that in there. Yeah, naturally. Well, what are my in my in movies? I mean, what you know, going back to the monster thing, it's like if, if this is like a genuine monster movie, yeah. that's the reason yes, why you go to see it. It's it got a creature it, yeah. in it. You wait to see the creature. Not very long. Not very long out no. in this movie. But I mean, generally in films. <clears throat> I don't know. I was going to go for like, what is the you know, in our stories monsters what do they represent i mean what are they their cautionary tales yeah, about the, f- the fears of like yeah. it's the fears of the town mm-hmm. you know don't wander into the forest because there might be monsters out there yeah it's shorthand for whatever that local community's fear that mm-hmm. fear basically. is basically mm-hmm. physical mm-hmm. killers and murderers mm-hmm. like real life yes. killers and murderers. Mm-hmm. yes monsters many things out there and you give yeah whatever you want to give to it there it is all right, then. But what does Rawhead Rex? Good versus evil, the standard. Yeah. Sure. All right. I thought maybe there was something there, but okay. <laughs> really. No, I mean. You hey, can't man, dig too deep in this going, movie. Yeah, we're going farther than they did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's all we can do. We're trying to apply some context for his existence and yes. when there isn't any. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, you're listening to us, like, trying to dig to try and find some kind of, like, I mean, literally, uh, I don't think, disagree with me if you may. <laughs> This movie is a monster shows up, runs around, kills people, and then gets put down by the end of the movie. That's mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's it. 
Yep. There's not really yeah. a whole lot else to latch onto here. Nope. <laughs> Except, Except the, the priest. The priest. Okay. And the fact that a woman was the one that had to do it. But there is this priest, and the, so the priest, <clears throat> upon, well, how does he find Rawhead Rex? I mean, he gets his hand burned, starts to look around wildly like he knows that there's some kind of pagan thing in here. This guy's never come off in the movie as like, uh, you know, straight up and down man of God priest anyway. Mm. Right. Cause he was always a little off with his dealings with the, yeah. you know, and that couple shots with the, the woman in the, in the audience, the congregation. Oh, we're sorry. About the verger. The verger. Okay. Sorry. The verger. Don't, yeah. the verger. There's an actual priest, right? Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Coot. The verger. The verger. Coot. Coot. Is he old? <laughs> he wouldn't have to be old. <laughs> <He> old? <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I was thinking the same thing, but. Aside from that. But that doesn't mean you put it in the script. Right. Yeah. Not, I didn't yeah. say it out loud. Well, it was his second script. What do you got? So at one point, it remind me when he first encounters Rawhead he, Rex. He um, allegedly summons him in some way. We, we, I, don't, I don't think they ever say how, but Rawhead Come comes, to me. comes to him in the in the, the cemetery outside the church and he drops his knees. He's like, "You came, you came," and like he called him there in some way. I'm not sure how. Mm. <laughs> he even apparently, claims it later. It's like he wants to baptize yes, you. Apparently, no. the way you get baptized by Rawhead is he pisses on you. <laughs> it's it's like it's what? out of nowhere, really, because nothing, <laughs> nothing, out of nowhere. nothing before this point would lead you to believe that this was something that Rawhead Rex was into. No. Um, it just kind of happens when his follower, there's nothing his loyal in, devotee, there's nothing in those finally fucking meets his glass God. windows about golden showers. There's no. nothing in there. <laughs> nothing. I, I, Where did that come from? And the way it was shot, like it was so shot off in the distance, made it even more like voyeuristic and yes. gross. Like, it did. Like if you're going to do it, just show us a close up of it happening. Don't yes. show us like right. behind a for plant it. really far away. Yeah, like, go don't, for it. Yeah. Like I want to put it there, full screen, like yeah. give it to us if and you're going to do it. And it's, for me, it gave me more questions if he's a giant dick what is he peeing on? Small, a little dun, dick, dun. Smaller dick. <laughs> yeah but he's not is? a giant guys, dick in the movie you so yeah. you don't have a smaller dick and you don't have that <laughs> but he just, i don't either he That's... pisses with a fire hose on this guy <laughs> to baptize him they did say it was a baptism yes, yeah. Okay, yeah but yeah. he was definitely he wants pissing, to baptize yeah. you what that, that's another situation where I like to think about the production and how, like, there's a guy with the squeeze bottle probably crouching down behind Rawhead Rex, just, like, squeezing at that yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what is my life? No, <laughs> what is this? The, the script guy was like, you know, we've thrown out most of what Clyde brought to this, but we got to this part, and I kind of like it. I think he could work. should keep this in the movie. Yeah, but it what's crazy work. about it is I think the way you're talking about it is probably... The idea that they shot it voyeuristically to lessen the impact of, like, we can't have a demon monster, well, rubber creature, yeah. pissing on a priest in a movie <laughs> and expect to get it past the, you know, the classification board. Yeah. So instead, we'll shoot it from a distance. That will make it a little <laughs> Everything softer. Everything from a distance. But in some, it actually ends up being, like, one of the best directorial ideas in the movie because it does make it like, Jesus, what yeah. the hell? There's this big seven foot tall or eight foot tall thing like peeing on this priest because it gives you no it time was to the most shocking part of the movie. I right, think. it gives you no time, no lead up to figure out what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It just happens, mm -hmm. and so that's yeah. why it's kind of shocking. Like he's on like, his knees what? and uh, raw head, and there's a stream. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> when you gotta go, you gotta go. Oh my yeah, god, that Thank that's you. yeah. He gets another devotee by the time the movie is done running the uh, police inspector who apparently just sees raw head Rex and goes like, you are my God. You yeah, know? it's for you. They're like, I he didn't miss something, right? There was no lead up no, no, to no, that. No. He, he literally just, like, just ran over there and started pouring gasoline on shit. I feel like if you see raw head Rex, like the moment you see him, you know, if that's your thing right there. <laughs> Like, that seems like, to be I what happened. Into this. It's like, yes, <laughs> I didn't know, but I'm into that. I'm going to kill people for you. So that's just, basically for you, bro. It. I don't get it either. I don't think it's I mean, like, to... it's a big, scaly monster. Well, scaly, whatever. It's yeah. a big monster, yeah, rubber monster. It's more smooth. Big, muscular monster. <laughs> but I don't understand why anyone would say, I mean, if I saw something, anything that didn't look human, I think, like, coming over the hill, it would be like, get the fuck out, especially if it's got a lot of <laughs> teeth. Right? Yeah. That's a, a run. 
But did you notice that no one really ran from him very much? Everyone just kind of crowded around. Even like, the townspeople the were trailer, like, hey, what's going on In the on trailer over park, there? they were like, uh, nobody was running. Like, no. n- nobody was running from him. They're all just kind of like keeping a slight distance. No, people, townspeople just show up at certain points. Yeah. Like, there was one point, I don't know what was going on. There were two people, and then it cut back to the scene, and then townsfolk just run in. Oh, like, yeah. Hey, what are we doing? Let yeah. us after the kid comes back. Is like, that what it is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the kid comes back, and then everybody kind of pours in. It's like, what's, what's going on there? Wow, they're really, uh, that. That uh, community is together mm-hmm. and That's paying attention to what's going on. That's trailer park community, though. Oh my trailer park community true. sticks together. Okay, that kid. Okay, two things about him were crazy distracting. The mullet, first of all, Thank super you. distracting. <laughs> and the jacket that, or the sweater he was wearing, okay. the front said okay, okay. but on the back yeah. said muscle power. Yeah. <laughs> the 80s. Not product placement as far as I know. And I believe yeah. baseball pants. Yeah, it's was so crazy distracting. Pants? Hey, man, yeah. it's Ireland in the 80s. I mean, what are you... In a trailer park in Ireland in the 80s. I got trailer nothing. Park, it's Ireland. one of those yeah. cultural differences that... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're Irish Although, and you understand the muscle power reference, please tell I, maybe, us what it means. Yeah, please. Um, <laughs> pretty sure we have a Brit friend out there. If you know, because you're close there, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Is that there anything? You go. Is that something? I've kind of uh, noticed a pee theme here. So when Howard's daughter went Thank to go you. pee, yeah. Rawhead Rex shows up. Uh, oh. Is that like his summoning? Uh, Someone's got to piss outside, and then he like pops up where they are. The ver- the verger, verger, verger. verger. That's verger. how he summoned him. By peeing. He peed. Yeah. What? Okay. I'm just making. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So like you could I say care. a lot of things right now. Be like, huh, did I miss that? Right. Yes. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> all right. So the uh, I guess the big showdown. Right. We got to get to the the showdown. And how how do you take raw? What? How can you defeat Rawhead Rex once he's been unearthed? Well, the priest. Vaginas. The priest is on his deathbed, and he's his last words are to Howard, telling him, "It's in the altar." That's his last word. Couldn't have mentioned this earlier. <sighs> yeah. Didn't, didn't think about that. How he found this out? He laid his hand on it. The priest did? Yes, he did. Well, that's all the, the priest takes, right? Because he's a holy man? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know things when you're a holy man? Yeah, yeah. Unless you're the verger. He lays his hand on it and gets it burned. I did like the fact that, you know, when the verger and Howard get into their mano a mano in the church later on, uh, I think Howard throws a Bible at him and it burns the verger. Because he's been baptized by... Oh, I thought the, the Bible demon. was on fire. The Bible was on okay, fire. Okay, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cooler if it was it my w- way. It, it would have been, been cooler. But he's also in the church. Like, <laughs> It feels like that should have had some impact. Yeah. I, I go more with the, the Bible was on fire. I think, uh, it, I think it might have been symbolic, but it was actually on fire. It was actually on fire. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. in the altar, yes. which apparently has not been discovered in... A millennia. Yes, sure. And this stone has been around. I mean, you know, we're from America. What do we know? Ever the oldest thing we have is what like 200 know? years. <laughs> Over there, they've got stuff that goes back. But he did say, hundreds. the priest said that the church had undergone re- uh, like renovations yep. in the mm. 1860s and that some of the stained glass would, would have gotten mixed up. So was that the last time Rawhead was there? Was in the 1860s or was it before that? I got the impression he was running around the jungle. This is the only ex- explanation yeah, for the jungle flashback. Yeah. Uh, whatever you no call idea. it, psychic vision, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. did the... Sting glass didn't really lead to anything, did it? I mean, he, I know there were bits and pieces that were in other stained glass windows, but it didn't really take much to put it together that he's like, look, the hand is over here, but if you put it up here, there's a tablet. I was just thinking, because that's the only explanation of how... It landed in this altar in the middle of a church without anyone noticing for like 3,000 years. Mm. And all of a sudden, it's there. Mm. Had to have been he was there before. I'm again, re- overthinking know. the movie. I am. Yeah, this I'm is thinking us a lot about doing our, this. our yeah, legwork here. But, uh, yeah. Damn it, Clive. Yeah. Or George Pavlov. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Holly's, in- ooh, Holly entered her angry stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> so what do they find in the altar? A statue of a pregnant woman. With there you a go. It was a pregnant woman, right? Yeah. It was, okay, yeah. That's I think so, because yeah. she had Feels some like kind it. of, uh, I don't know, if like it was a, a carved orifice. statue kind of thing. <laughs> in the stomach. <laughs> carved orifice. <laughs> there was Another great 80s there. band, if I've ever heard one. Carved, carved or orifice. Copyright uh, 2017, that's a, that's Saturday Night That's a depressing emo band right there. <laughs> 
All right, so all right. <laughs> that's oh, that's a bad name for a short film. Like, two, yeah, Carved copyright Dorfus. 2017 mm-hmm. Saturday Night Freak Show. Carved Ugh, that's a, the, I don't, I don't want to watch that. <laughs> don't make that, Colin. Why right. would you come it's up with something like that? That's horrible. Gruesome. Ugh. Shame that's on what you. I do. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you use this stone to uh, combat Rawhead Rex? Well, a you man, don't. a man can't do shit with it, Colin. Can't do shit Damn. unless you read the book, the story. But oh, well, how'd the well, movie I, go? But I did oh, okay. <laughs> I did not. No. Um, in the movie, apparently, if you're a woman, you just hold it. <laughs> so this is, but preferably it's, above it's, your it's, head. Right, yeah. yeah. Preferably because above your head. What's the, the wife has been doing? I think nothing. I would have. I think I would have held it like Care Bear style. Right. <laughs> just been like, hey, yeah. Because you know, hold that can get tired. Like that's tiresome. Yeah. Hold it above the like head. Care Bear style. Yeah. Care Bear stare. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. Was there any sense to this thing at all? No. Like, I mean, I'm watching it, and like, you know, he gets the stone out of the altar, wanders out into the yard, and he's like, "Okay, sweetheart, all right, let's do something." Yeah. You're like, "Who the fuck is he talking to?" The stone he's or Rawhead? To the Rex? End. It's just like, "Hey, he's calling the statue, sweetheart." My Rawhead yeah. was standing right there. I'm like, "Maybe he's calling I Rawhead, I was like, is, sweetheart." Is he challenging he him? Yeah, he's, that's what I thought. He was challenging. <laughs> Come on, him. Sally. Let's do it. <laughs> but apparently he's talking to the stone. And nothing happens. And Rawhead's like batting people out of yeah. the way. And then his wife shows up. Magically. For, yeah. Mm-hmm. And screams. Because, yeah. One of those great screams where your arms are just kind of glued to your side. Just like. <laughs> because she's, we, we have established that she's a terrible mother. So, she, of course, she would leave her remaining child by herself. Well, in the, with the, the cop went back. Do we know that he got there? We I don't mean, know. No. We don't know. But I'm assuming the She the wanted cop... her to go out and pee in the fields of Ireland by herself. <laughs> yeah. One like, of them. Yeah. A hundred yards that way. Fine, <laughs> sweetie. Mother. Go behind that bush. That's behind that gate. <laughs> in the middle of that field. Behind that sexual predator. Go back yeah. there. <laughs> You're four years old, but that's okay. Weird. You gotta learn how to do it sometime. Weird yeah. people. <sighs> so the lasers that came out of that statue. <laughs> this is where I was getting to. Yeah. <laughs> What the hell is going on with that? Lasers. Do you remember a cartoon called She-Ra, Princess of Power? Oh, yeah. Did and that remind you of that at all? Chain. When she does her change for the honor of Grey Skull with all yeah, the lasers? Is that the same thing that He-Man does? How's yeah, no. The, by the same power. Deal? Yeah, no, but this is a girl. Yeah, but then all the lasers. It's it the was 80s, the same thing. Man. It was the what same they thing. did. <laughs> the 80s. But I'm the, using that. Uh, uh, I'm relying on that a lot to explain. It is. That's yeah. go to. It's like the 80s. It's what they yeah. did. And the, because it was awesome. Okay. No. <laughs> right. no. Right. This scene went on for way longer than I thought it would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long was this movie? Do we even know? Uh, 90 some odd minutes. <laughs> 89 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And 87 of that was this fucking ending scene. My God. Lasers. Hopping around a cemetery. Yeah, it's like it can't take this long, right? Well, they uh, wrap themselves around. I mean, like they're actually like whip lasers, right? Like yeah, because like, they're around pulling his, him away, uh, his arms and stuff. Off. They wander around David Dukes or Howard Herford. Uh, yeah, and they yeah. leave him alone, but attack Rawhead and drive him into a uh, uh, an open were they, grave. Were they spirits? Is that why they were yeah, floating around? Magic. Did you see the magical woman who came out of his wife? Yeah, I saw oh. her. I saw her. Him? But what were the little lasers? Out of the carved those, orifice like, or whatever we called it? Yeah. This so is she... the power of femininity, is it not? Like attacking Rawhead Rex. It's some kind of possibly, maybe it was his mom. They're so like estrogen lasers? Pew, it's like down with the patriarchy is what's going on here. Yep. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what's going on in the, the right. Although in the mo- in the story, it's like backwards because Howard is actually able to do it with the fertility symbol. So it's a guy who's carrying the feminine power is able to beat raw head but Rex. He, they well, switched it in the movie because it's more natural. Oh, in the book that or so yeah, in the story. Oh, okay. You but in the sprung movie, that on. You kept holding it back from us, and then you just sprung it in there in the middle of the conversation. Yeah. So yeah. in the book, what are these? He's little- able to do it. Yeah. What are the mm-hmm. li- what are other little gems about the story that you're not telling us? Well, yeah. no, I mean Anything that's else? basically <laughs> the end of it, right? It's like because I interpret that as like, well, Clive Barker's gay, so he writes a protagonist who's a man who has a feminine power source is somehow able to beat the rampaging male monster, mm. right? Whereas mm-hmm. in the movie, when they got to it, they're like, well, this makes more sense if it's, if a actual woman, woman. it's an actual <laughs> yeah. woman who's able to defeat the monster. Sure. Yeah. That okay, makes sense. then. 
So yeah. they defeat Rawhead. Do they? Do they? They they do. Sort and of. Falls into it's got a... that carry ending. Yeah. Falls into a I don't know what the hell is it? It's like hollow ground. It's like an open pit. It's, it's, it's a like grave. a cavern. This underground yeah. caverns. What do they call that? There's there's a name for it. Catacomb. It's catacombs. like a catacomb underneath there. Is that what it was? I know. There's there was always like some catacombs kind of under lid. churches, Colin. You should know this. Oh yeah. I live down there. We're like, in there one right now. Like another... The resurrected didn't that have catacombs mm-hmm. under that church like under the another, house? I feel like there's another name. Wasn't for that it. Clive Barker? Nope, that was Dan O'Bannon. But I appreciate your callback, and oh, it's an you. awesome movie. And it you is pretty good. Our episode. Yeah, that was a okay. good one. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. So, so he but falls again, in. The statue yeah. falls in. I, they they walk but away. But you would think like the statue like arm. fell on him. That would be a thing that kept him down from now on. Like and Thor's then somebody hammer. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Can't believe laughs> Three hundred years later, some stupid kid would be like, "Hmm, I wonder what this is," and they'd be like, Rah! "Well, that did happen because they buried him under a gigantic." Yeah, but nobody stone. lifted off yeah. the thing or anything. Yeah, like that. well, that would have been cool if it landed in some kind of. I mean, but again, a better is directed. He, why movie. is he? Th- did, were they in? They were in the graveyard. Yeah, there's a cemetery the outside the church. It felt like a different location at the end. Yeah, it was there. It's weird. Mm. But he pops up. Mm. Yeah, yeah, weird little like, kid puts an anticlimactic for you listeners. It was for us. Yeah, but it's just the most bizarre thing because he, I think the dialogue actually says like something like, "Oh, thank God that's over. This is the end," or something. Fade out, fade back up to the kid who Putting, is the yeah. brother of the girl. It's whose Mullet boyfriend, kid, right? It's Mullet, Mullet kid, kid, yeah. Who hates that guy? But I, I, no, I think Andy's his brother. I think what? they were brothers. Oh shit! What? Wait, I don't know where you got the babysitter thing, but I'm pretty sure the two guys are brothers, and he brought his girl over. My God, you have just changed this entire. <laughs> oh my movie. God! Recomm- <laughs> recommendations all around. <laughs> no, no, I'm, they were brothers. That's that's brotherly fighting. We're just like, I don't like you. Get out of here! I'm gonna kill you. How many times I've said that to my brother? I don't know. But yeah, they were brothers, and he brought his girlfriend over. All right. Totally. Well, there you go. So he Bam. was his brother. Mysteries. Right. His brother Uncovered. died and he's putting flowers on the grave. That does, that make, does make sense. That does make more sense. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> give this an extra star. Oh, we're going to watch it again. No. With a whole different perspective. This shows That changes how... the entire plot. Yeah. Ugh. Just a fraction of it. But yes, they were brothers. I'm okay. surprised Mullet Kid made it through this movie, honestly. Me too. Like, yeah. <laughs> Right, I figure in the Trailer Park Massacre. Like were, <laughs> speaking of Massacre, trailer and for massacre. all of the... Uh, I think that is a movie. I was going to say, okay. that sounds familiar. Uh, it should be. For all of the wanton killing that takes place that Rawhead Rex is responsible for, what do you think of the gore quotient for a pseudo-slasher movie? It was a great gag with a hand. Yeah, yeah that uh, was... I appreciated that. And the... And the yeah, the, um, that was it. Andy, what? The, the ver- Verger? I can't, can't remember. The Richard got. There was a nice squirt there at the yeah. end. Nice little. When he goes to like yeah. make out with Rawhead Rex or whatever. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. Bites him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get yeah. right there. Nice Sprays little get the spray. Neck. It was more just smashing and destroying than it was like yeah. bloody yeah. killing. Like There should have been more blood. Question also. Go ahead. He had more of a Godzilla approach, just like mow it all down kind of method. There should have been more body parts getting ripped off and stuff like that. He's a big muscular oh, dude. He should be yeah. ripping people Pulling in half. People apart. Yeah. yeah. Grab my yeah. arms and go. Yeah. See, this is why I support a remake. I do. I would you wouldn't get me anywhere near it. I After don't. seeing this. But the central concept, the story might be you could do something with you it. You could do mm-hmm. something with this. If you punched it up with stuff that people actually want to see. I they mean, have, are you talking about chance. like him ripping people apart? I thought his first victim, which he drags around like a rag doll for half the movie, it feels yeah. like, and then slings him up over a tree. And then we see him working at him. Yeah. And again, we're watching this on a YouTube copy, also so it was things. blurry. But it looked like he was yes. trying to pull his arm off. So many pixels. And then it kept going for longer than it... Yeah, I'm like, this guy's a strong thing. He should just right, be so like... Pulling the, you know, the so chicken was the no I'm money sorry, shot. But it just dawned on me that he's dragging him around in case he gets hungry. Like, that's his snack. <laughs> you think right. that's what it is? Yeah. Something like that. I mean, well, he could eat him anywhere. Rawhead Rex doesn't give a shit. Like, like he'll eat his, somebody anywhere. That's his fucking granola bar. He's like, I need to find a private place where I can eat this guy, but let's wander through the campground and look in the window of the RV to find out, like, oh, yeah, I'm so coming I'll after eat him. Next. I'll eat him, I guess, if I can't find anything better. Mm-hmm. Huh? Then he slings him up and eats. Part so, of it. all right. Question: 
that this leads us to is what is the character of Rawhead Rex? What's his fucking guy? What's his motivation? What's he doing? He's just hungry. Woke up. He's been sleeping for a very long time. He's just like, uh, you know, I got this craving. I got to like a bear. He's got to eat after he wakes up. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know what his for 23 days and then go. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a total. Uh... But the Irish countryside yeah, is that. Yeah, rotten yeah, yeah, with yeah, sheep. Yeah, yeah. Like, is there some, like, does he have to eat people? Is that what it is? That's like, what he like, prefers. I feel like he enjoys people. Yeah. 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 Maybe I, human I, I meat tastes better. His, I don't know. There's, I can't like chicken. Seems so much more difficult. what the point Baby of this monster chicken. is. Baby tastes of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and chicken tastes of humans. Good. Glad to get It would be him. cooler if he was just going around <laughs> eating, like, little kids. I mean, I mean it know. would have been better, yes. Yeah. Like she eat all the children. They yeah. have a specific flavor. It's mm-hmm. like I gotta eat these yeah. kids. He's gotta only eat children in order to get he has no reason to be doing anything. He's got no end game. He's got no specific people he's going after. We know who he won't go after. But he he, he just, fears the vagina. Yeah, but he's that's just about pissed it. That people are in his lair. Like there's no like this used to be my kingdom. I mean, you kind of maybe get that from the verger, but other than that, like there's no this monster does not emote. You know, it would have been better if he did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know the better way to do this story? So all the trailer parks in Ireland, their kids are going missing. And it's just trailer parks and no one gives a fuck because they're poor and doesn't listen to them. Yeah. But it's a real problem. There you go. There's your remake. There it is. There it is. Terrorizes <laughs> there it is. trailer parks. I like it. There it is. Uh-huh. And it gives, and that like it. gives, because then you hold the monster back for a little bit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because people don't know why kids mm-hmm. are missing and everything. Yeah. So you get a little, mm-hmm. so not not you like three minutes that, into the like, movie. Point of view yeah. shot, like the movie starts with a cold open. You get the point yeah. of view. Dun, 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 mm-hmm. like and it's like yeah. seriously mm-hmm. eviscerated children is what I, <laughs> what I want. <laughs> like copyright that. I want seriously <laughs> eviscerated children in the Raw Head Rex Eviscerated remake. children, band name. Yeah. Well, see, there we go. That's yeah. another good one. Oh, yeah. oh, I man. want that. That's what I want in the remake. Just for go all the- for it. Band names that we can make up him a dick. I don't care. This show, you'd think one of us could play an instrument. Nope. No, no, no. not at all. <laughs> I have a ukulele. Okay. I can keep a beat pretty good. That's it. <laughs> oh, I, got I can it. play the recorder. <laughs> Bra- Whoa. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. Do we say that it is Rawhead Rex? And uh, why yeah. the hell not? I think so. I don't think <laughs> I have anywhere else to go. Well, let's tell you what we're going to do. Let's, well, I'm amazed that we talked for an hour about this. But, um, so listen, Run what we're going to do, if you stuck with us, we want you to stick with us a little while longer. Right. We're going to we read have, some viewer mail, apologize. listener mail, sorry. We're going to read some listener mm-hmm. mail, and then we're going to uh, have our final thoughts on Rawhead Rex. You'll find out what we really thought, our critiques. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. <laughs> the, the film. Well, this is where we if surprise you, you, because then all of a sudden, like, two of us are going to love it, yeah. and two of us are going to hate it. It's no, remember be... last week? I was surprised by Colin's review. I was, too. I really was. I'm rethinking that in light of tonight's movie. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> there it is. All right, so we should summon our mail guy, mm-hmm. Igor. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor. I got nothing. Keep going. All right. So we want <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to remind you that if you want to get a hold of us, all you have to do is hop on over to Facebook and find us. We're facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. We're also on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And you can email us the old fashioned way. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. I Thank forgot you. about that. There Thank you go. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, our first comment about Rawhead Rex comes from Ryan Burrett. Oh, Ryan. oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Ryan says Rawhead Rex is hilarious. And to be honest, I thought most of the adaptations of the Books of Blood have been good. The standouts being Candyman and Dread. Dread is pretty good. Uh, Lord of Illusions is also one of my favorite, but is, again, very different from the source material. Travis Worthy writes in. Uh, who's that guy? Says, <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean that. That's all right. We outed yeah. his last name. Uh, <laughs> so. Baptized in Piss is the name of my first black metal album. <laughs> or will be. So there we go. We're back on the band. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Uh, from our past episode, Dead Heat, Dom Cree. Hello, Dom. Can't Hi, Dom. stop apologizing for this. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as... Okay, we so, had a great... I oh had a great God. time, Dom. That was fun. Thank you. I would never have known. Well, Dom says, I am honestly embarrassed. <laughs> I once thought this movie was a blast. 
It's up there with R.I.P.D. when it comes to the ruining of the brilliant premise of Undead Zombie Buddy Cop Adventures. How the hell do you screw up such an awesome idea is beyond me. The rage burns within me as I type this. Sorry, guys. Uh, See, I think he's... (laughs) What Dom is doing is like playing it down a lot, just so when you know we have low expectations for something, he's just like, "Oh, I hated it. it was dumb. It was stupid." And then we're like, "No, good choice, Dom." So Actually, to be it. fair, yeah. when he wrote that, he hasn't heard the episode yet. Uh, oh There's yeah. There's that. Okay, so yeah, you'll Listen. if you've heard the episode now, we. Didn't I love Dead it. Heat so oh, much, heat. <laughs> so much that because I rented it for us that night, I had it for 24 hours. I watched it again. Get the fuck out! I of definitely here. did. <laughs> I watched it again with a friend of mine. That's that's right. Wow. Loved it. Well, wow. that's good. Uh, Bobette Georgie says, I saw Treat Williams. This is a star of Dead Heat and a softcore porn a long time ago. What? Probably on old cable TV, don't recall. Maybe unscrambled Playboy channel. He's um gifted. What? I mean, is there a better name for porn than Treat? Treat oh, Williams. That's true. Touche. <laughs> We can't Treat. confirm or deny this. I looked up, I'm like, that, that can't be. It's like, like he kept his porn name when he went into <laughs> yeah. legitimate acting. He's like, it works. It yeah. works. Anyone, anyone want to look into that? I mean, I will. I'm not going to lie. I'm gonna, <laughs> not going to lie. I'm going to look into it. Whatever it is, it's not on the IMDb. Unless she's oh, talking no, about something not, that no. is on. No, I'll find it. I'm going to look into it. it, too. I'll look into it. All right. So, <laughs> curiosity will get the better of me. In our best of the oh. episode where we talked about the best and worst movies of 2016. Somebody's going to rag on me for Rogue One. Oh, shit. Chris Huddleston writes hey, in and says, I have to agree with Sean about Rogue One. Ah! It was my biggest disappointment of the year. Disappointing. He also says, great list, everyone. <clears throat> Glad to see the Neon Demon get some love. Oh, there you go. The Invitation, a great movie oh, currently streaming on Netflix. Oh, the Invitation. Oh, invi- I, I forgot about, about the, invitation. the Invitation. He says that, that was, was his really number good. one. Oh, that's, good. That's a good pick, Chris. That's, that's a That was a really good movie, and I was really surprised by that one. Yeah. Damn, I, I forgot, forgot about, about that. that. Good yeah. pick. What'd you think, Colin? <laughs> I liked it, but I don't know. I wouldn't. You were saying you'd put it on your top five? Nah, not top five, but maybe top ten. I was. I really liked that movie. Yep, I liked it. I don't think I would have put it on my top five. Mm, no, not top five. But it was his number one. He says the witch and green room were also good. Yeah, but I felt they were a little overrated. He liked Blue Ruin much more mm. than Green Room. I do like Blue Ruin. We all do, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. We actually have letters on paper. Yeah. yeah. That's what you heard. The old fashioned. All right. So, uh, Colin, uh, you want to take the reins here? What did you think uh, of Rawhead stole. Rex? You <sighs> Sean's looking forward to that all night. Um, I like yelling at Colin. Colin! <laughs> <laughs> what did anyway. you think of Rawhead Rex? Um, well, Sean, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, Not me, just Sean. <laughs> this was a. And Holly? This was a uh, a film, I think, like I said, I saw this when it came out. I haven't seen it since. Watching it, I'm like, you know, I remember reasons for why he can't, like, touch a pregnant woman. Like, why do I remember this? I'm like, I must have read the the book. I think I have a couple of them upstairs. During but the acid days? It's, maybe. Yeah, back then. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, you know, I mean, I've read, I think I read all the books of blood way back in the day. And it probably just, you know, it's all gone away to little bits and pieces. But um, so I had expectations for this movie based on like I remembered it not being a bad movie. Uh, it turns out that I was wrong. Um, it's <laughs> really I think, well, <clears throat> it's it's a combination of two things. It's badly written, I think. Yeah. And it is badly directed. Uh, Clive Barker has said in interviews that he thinks, uh, probably rightly so that, you know, horror movies are made by the director more so than the writer. Right. I mean, yeah, it's more of a, you know, the orchestration of, you know, a series of shots that create and music that create a suspense. And George Pavlo doesn't have a fucking clue how to do any of this. Mm -hmm much less stage anything in any kind of way. There was one shot early on, I think, where all of a sudden, this is an editing thing, obviously, but we cut back from... To the Verger? To the Verger, out of the fucking blue. And you're like, I don't understand what you're even trying to imply by Mm -hmm. interjecting his presence into the middle of this scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't understand. I still don't, even now. And It's not avant-garde, it's just bad. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, something that obviously was an idea to you know, the director and his editor that is not communicated this whole thing. We're trying to figure out like 
who's related to who in the quote unquote babysitter sequence. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that's explained a, in the screen. It's a code we could break. <laughs> <laughs> and not explained by the direction. Same thing with like the, the at one point I forgot that our main character early on before he gets killed. I forgot they had a son because the way that they're staging some of the scenes were like, she's putting the, the daughter to bed. Or they're talking about where's the daughter at. Yeah. And all that. I'm like, wait a second. Did, wasn't that kid a, a boy a minute ago? Like, Oh, did they have another kid? Wait, where's the other kid now? Like what kind of responsible parents are this? I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's not, uh, and it's very, it's very, it, it plays very long. You're waiting for yeah. raw head Rex to show up when he does. It's not really awesome. You know, he doesn't do anything that, you know, establishes like, you know, here's the massive amounts of blood, guts, and gore that are going to be thrown around. This is going to be so, you know, you're going to wait to see him again. Um, the performances are just like, pff, I mean, this is like TV mo movie kind of stuff. Uh, David Dukes, who plays the lead guy, I think, you know, is a TV actor, did a lot of like Dawson's Creek or something mm -hmm. like that. I don't know. He did. He's yeah, he had a seven episode arc on Dawson's Creek. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you yeah. go. Yes. Dad. Yes. Did you say yep. that as a, yes, he did. Wow. I was gonna say like Jack and Andy McPhee. Yeah. 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 As, a, no. as an aficionado yep. of Dawson's Creek. I'm damn be. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. You re hey, seriously remember this guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Wait. Who's dead? Yep. Who's dead? Was he? Andy. Jack and Andy. Yeah. Jack and Andy. McPhee. Yeah. All right. Andy, then. Yeah. Jack was the game the, football player. I yep. remember Jack. Mm -hmm. They're dead. Andy was Pacey's girlfriend. And his sister. Yeah. Yeah. That was the thing. Dawson's Creek had weird names applied to all the characters, usually gender swapped. Right. Yeah. So it makes it really whatnot. confusing. Pacey. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I just <laughs> looked it up on the IMDb. You missed a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I mean, that's basically uh, that's it. it. It was a letdown in both the story department, the suspense department, the horror department. The music is just overrated, uh, overrated, over. It's obnoxious. Uh, like from the beginning car scene, it's oh, just yeah. like hammer at home for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's orchestral, but I'm not entirely sure if a hundred percent that it wasn't MIDI synth, but it sounded like a real orchestra, I think. Yeah. But it was just overblown noise. Uh, the monster was, I don't know. Again, I keep looking back to that first time I saw the image in the Fangoria and thought that it was a cool looking monster, but it is all that work. Of whatever, some sketch somewhere probably looks cool. Mm -hmm. The physical realization of the thing and the methods used to, again, I'm using air quotes here, to bring it to life yeah. uh, <laughs> on the screen are woefully underdeveloped. Bring it to mediocrity. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that you should see this movie, and I don't think you want to, and I don't think you can. I defy you to fi even find this movie. <laughs> It, there I mean, were large efforts for, had to try and get this movie. Yeah. yeah. One of our copies, like, quit halfway through the quit, thing. So. Quit. It's like, yeah. I can't. The, the PlayStation <laughs> said I can't do this anymore and quit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, lives fonder in my memory than it does in reality. Pass on Rawhead Rex. Sean. I think we are all victims of what we thought mm. was a cool looking monster yes. in pictures. And then the reality fell far short of what we were expecting. Yes. Uh, like you said, Colin, I mean, it's not it's not written well. The directing is horrible. The monster shows, like we said, five minutes into the movie, and he doesn't do enough cool things for you to, like, want to see him more. Exactly. Like, I want, if you get a big monster that looks like this, I want him doing destructive things, not clearing a table with his hand. I uh, it was I was severely let down by that. Um, there's no Although motivation. how cool would it have been if he did the tablecloth thing? I mean, I would give him like a thing about food too. Like, yeah. I'd give it another star. Food. Yes, I'd give yeah. it another star if he was just. Nobody mentions it. No he one. just grabs it, the tablecloth, whips it off, everything's still there, and we move on with the movie. Like, it would get another star yeah, for me. Yeah, for real. Are you giving it one star because of the babysitter thing? Holly explained it, and you're like, oh my God, it makes it one star. The, for what the babysitter thing? The fact that, the, that they're brothers? I explained it. He explained it. Oh, shit. So it gets yeah. no stars. Oh man, there it goes. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's kind of it's a it's a mess. It's a mess. There's nothing yeah. cool uh, about this movie. The monster is like it's an inarticulate guy in a rubber suit. Um, the story is horrible. There's no motivations for really anybody. We're scraping the barrel and trying to figure this movie out. Um, nothing. I, I was may have dozed off. 
goes somewhere in there a little bit. It's boring. It goes long. Oh, I can't recommend this movie, and I don't think you should watch it. Um, just go look at the pictures on Google, and you'll be fine. You'll be like, hey, that looks pretty cool. It's as far as you need to go. I do not recommend Rawhead Rex. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I agree that the directing and the editing is especially bad. The editing, like, uh, if you're, like, a mass comm student in college right okay. now, you're doing a better job editing yep. whatever project you're working on than the person that made this movie. Work. So <laughs> I, uh, I'm i trying to think of, like, the Venn diagram of people that would be interested in this movie. Like, okay, so you monster movies and, like... Ryan Burrett? It, it might, might just be Ryan Burrett. <laughs> He's got the Clive Barker thing going, so I think that's only where it comes from, but... Like, so we've got monster movies and maybe like European countryside monster movies, which like, yeah, I can name two off the top of my head that are better than this. Go watch American Werewolf in London if you need that oh, European countryside God, yes. or Dog it's Soldiers is another great one that takes place in the European countryside. Just don't like and it doesn't matter how cool you make a monster look if it can't move or it looks really stupid when it does move. That's when you have to go back and just start all over again because it's not going to work on film. I think. It's just it doesn't have enough going for it to be a substantial enough movie that I could recommend to someone. The only person that should watch it is if you're going to watch it to cut it into like a trailer for like a comedy movie. Yeah. Like if you're going to do a YouTube like fake trailer for like <laughs> Rawhead Rex is a comedy because there's a lot of great one liners in this movie. You yeah. can cut a trailer for it, then watch it. Otherwise, just don't. What if just you're don't. in a heavy metal band and you need stuff? No, okay. No, because it's a great heavy metal music video out of this. Uh, the film. silhouettes of him like on the hill and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You can, oh, yeah. You can yes. use some really great footage from this for some mixed media background for a rock show. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. yeah. Be good. What is that? That is yeah. the purpose of this yeah. movie. That is yeah. the pinnacle of, of what it will reach. <laughs> it's like raw material. <laughs> oh, you're in. Welcome All right. to the Saturday Night Freak All Show. Right. <laughs> wow. There it is. I'm going to drop a bomb on you guys. The the monster from Monster in the Closet is way better than this one. I was actually wondering about that. Cause <laughs> yeah. Watching this, I yeah. was thinking of Monster in the Closet. Yeah, like, I knew you were. Which one is worse? I know you were. <laughs> Come on, Colin, say it. Say it. I can't remember that one. Don't you <laughs> lie. They're both equally crappy to me. Like, they oh. occupy in my brain the same, like, lower tier of <sighs> hell. I can't get anything out of you. <laughs> All right. <sighs> I picked this movie. This is my fault, you guys. Well, it was suggested well, I blame to you, the suggester, <laughs> Ryan. Thank you. That's true. Mm-hmm. Ryan, you ignorant slut. I can't even. You can't even. I can't even. You can't even. There are so many plot holes in this that I can't even say that this is a fully functioning screenplay. It's, it's plot, just. Plot. Thank you. You're right. There has to be a plot for plot holes. That's true. The direction is, there's no direction. The editing's terrible. The music, like, you can't, you couldn't even come up with music that actually fit the movie. Like, that would have done something. There's nothing. There's nothing good about this movie. Not one thing. It was boring as all hell. It felt way too long. The monster, my God. I just wanted to like him. We saw we saw pictures and we got so excited and I just wanted to enjoy seeing him on the screen and I didn't at all. The first like second I'm like, oh, there. okay, that's it. Rubber suit guy. Just nothing. This. The best part was that he peed on someone. (laughs) The most shocking part of this movie was that he got peed on. I I seriously can't even talk about this movie anymore. I can't. No, no one should ever watch this. No, I I do want to know, Ryan, if you are listening, I want to know if you like this movie because it's a childhood memory movie. Mm. I really want to know that. He said it was hilarious. We are seeing it different than I think the way he appreciates it. Yeah, I think so. (laughs) And to his credit, he suggested several other movies. This is the one that you picked, Holly. I know. I know. (laughs) But I really do want to know because I know a a lot of movies that we watch when it's a personal pick. We pick it because it's 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 sentimental. And I really am curious if that has any play in why he recommended this. So if he wants to let us know, that'd be great. I'm just curious. Otherwise, I can't recommend anyone waste their time on this movie. Well, all right. That's the uh, <laughs> roundtable for Rawhead Rex. And I know you're dying to know what we're picking next week. So what we did... I've still got a pick coming up, but that's going to be in two weeks. What we did for next week... Is it, is why we, is it two weeks? Because we're keeping with the... 
Huh? We're staying in rotation. We got to have the four movies. Did you already were... pick? No. no. So, the, what we're going to do oh. is we all sat around the table okay. and voted on what we were going to watch. <laughs> You'd think I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were sitting right For as there, many buddy. questions as, I was, as I'm asking, you'd think I wasn't there. All right, <laughs> right, I'm with you now. Okay. Continue. This is from earlier this evening. So, next week, we are going to watch Terror Tracked Yay. with John so Ritter excited. from the year 2000. John Ritter and who? Brian Cranston. Uh, Brian Cranston. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait. Watch the tra- <laughs> find the trailer for this watch movie, the folks. Trailer. It might be called I mean, House on Terror Track. House on Terror Track. Yeah, we're gonna it find feels out. Like, yes, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> yes. We'll okay. let you know. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, friends. And until then, the basement is going dark.